the Wind Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Book 19 Metamorphosis, Chapter 51, Metamorphosis, Breaking Through the Cocoon, Becoming a Butterfly. At this moment, Linley's original body and his three divine clones all regained their consciousness. Linley's first thought was, what happened? I'm not dead? He had no awareness of what had happened in the past 34 long years. Actually, to Linley's original body and three divine clones, it was as though just a second or two passed. But in the next instant, when Linley communicated with his divine fire clone, he understood that he had already been in a coma for 34 years. Where am I? Linley looked at his surroundings, then sat up. When he sat up, Linley sensed that he had changed. Huh? What's going on? Linley could clearly sense the spatial ripples around him, and he could clearly visualize Blue Fire, Graham, Rischum, and Bibi, who were seated in the nearby room. This was a sort of feeling of control, a feeling that made Linley feel as though he had control over his own destiny. He felt like an emperor. It was a feeling of absolute control. Linley. Boss. A series of overjoyed cries rang out. The movement Linley made when he sat up caused the four people outside to notice him as well. These four simultaneously entered the stone room. Linley looked at the four in front of him. Rizchum, Vham, and Bluefire were all overjoyed, while Bibi was so excited that tears were gathering in his eyes. Boss. Bibi threw himself right into Linley's arms. Ha ha, Bibi, stop crying. You are like a kid. Linley rose to his feet, leaving the stone bed and standing up. He chuckled. Bibi laughed through his tears, then wiped his nose and snorted. Boss, it's all your fault. You've been in a coma for 34 years. You tell me, isn't that terrifying? How did I end up in a coma for 34 years? Linley didn't understand. The nearby blue fire laughed, Linley, 34 years ago, you were struck by a full force attack from Magnus, but luckily, the soul stone helped you stay alive. But who would have imagined that during the coma period, your soul began to mutate? The energy of the soul stone was quickly used up. We were all worried that you wouldn't be able to hold on, but you managed to survive. A soul mutate? Linley was badly startled. Me? Right. You. Why don't you give it a test and see what you can find? Blue Fire laughed while urging him. Some changes can't be seen from the surface. Only you yourself can sense them. Right, boss. Give it a try. Let's see how your soul has become. Bibi said, excited. You are the very first person with four divine clones who underwent a soul mutation. What is it like, for someone with four divine clones to become a soul mutate? Rizjum's eyes were burning with curiosity as he looked at Linley. I have four divine clones, but was able to undergo a soul mutation? Linley himself could barely believe it, but he still shut his eyes beginning a careful investigation of his current soul. Within his sea of consciousness. Above the enormous sea of consciousness floated an illusory, rainbow-like light. His spiritual energy was like an ocean of water, with waves of it rolling about. This spiritual energy seemed translucent and dreamlike, almost like glass. The most unique thing was that sword-shaped soul. The sword-shaped soul hovered above the sea of consciousness. But the current sword-shaped soul had become translucent. Only, a layer of grey energy covered that sword-shaped soul. It looked rather ordinary, and not as eye-catching as the original, rainbow-culled sword-shaped soul. What a powerful, unique sensation! Linley murmured silently to himself. Others, even Blue Fire, 
who ventured into Linley's soul, wouldn't discover anything unique about Linley's current soul. Only Linley himself could sense it. The feeling of control. It is quite unique. Linley said to himself. And then, Linley stopped thinking about it as he began to inspect other things carefully. Ah, my soul protecting sovereign artifact. Linley found, to his astonishment, that the hole in the soul protecting sovereign artifact was currently being repaired at an astonishing speed, thousands of times faster than in the past when he first became a hired. And this repairing process was a true repair of the sovereign artifact. In the past, what he was doing was essentially putting a bandage over it, not truly repairing it. But now, the whole of the soul protecting sovereign artifact was slowly shrinking. When the day came for the whole to vanish, the soul protecting sovereign artifact would be completely restored. How dot how can this be? Linley didn't dare believe it. The speed at which a soul protecting sovereign artifact could be repaired was correlated to the strength of one's soul and one's spiritual energy. Linley could sense how powerful his soul had become, but for it to be able to repair the soul protecting sovereign artifact at such an astonishing rate. He still felt this was inconceivable. Given this speed, most likely in just a few years, it will be completely repaired. Linley discovered that the other souls of his other three clones had also transformed. Unfortunately, my divine fire clone wasn't here to transform as well. Still, the results will be the same, in the future, when the divine fire clone merges with my main body and joins with the other four souls, they will exchange energy with each other and it will slowly transform as well. Linley understood that it was like his original body's soul. Actually, his original body's soul was just the soul of a saint. But it was with together his other souls. His main soul and the souls of the other divine clones were a part of a whole, and over a long period of time, the various souls replenished each other, causing his original body's soul to naturally grow powerful as well. After all, they were all one to begin with. A soul mutate? Doesn't that mean that I can fuse four types of divine power? Linley couldn't help but begin to test it. He first used three types of high head power, earth, wind, and water. Within Linley's body, three surges of divine power began to swirl around like watery dragons. Once they touched each other, it was as though they were one family, there wasn't a hint of repulsion at all. The three surges of high head power, under Linley's control, merged into a fused whole, and then as they did, the color changed as well. Formerly, they were earth and yellow, light green, and as you are green, now fused together, they were an inky jade color, so dark as to be nearly black. This inky jade divine power oiled about within Linley's body. So powerful. Linley grew excited. At the same time, Linley also used a hint of God level fire type divine power to fuse with it. Once the fire divine power touched that powerful surge of inky jade divine power, it too fused with it. A. Eh? The power actually grew weaker? Linley could sense that after the inky jade divine power fused with the divine fire power, it seemed to have become internally impacted, with the power weakening slightly. Can it be because I have yet to reach the high head level in fire? This was Linley's guess. It wasn't just random, as though fusing more would be better. It was like an army, if an elite corps had some weaker soldiers added to it, it would actually lower their combat effectiveness. Right. When Olivier reached the god level, he said that when both of his divine clones reached the god level, only then did his power increase greatly. Linley now completely understood. In fusion, a balance was necessary. Earth, wind, water, these three sources of divine power were at the high head level. As for fire, it was only at the god level, rather weak. Linley, Linley, 
Ms. Jim's voice rang out, interrupting Lin Li's line of thought. Within the stone room, the other four were staring at Lin Li. Ms. Jim urged, Hey, Lin Li, what's going on? Stop just standing there like a fool, tell us what happened. Let's talk in the main hall. Lin Li laughed as he spoke. Lin Li's group of five entered the main hall, surrounding the long table and sitting down. Lin Li, you successfully mutated your soul? Blue Fire said with a calm laugh. Right. Lin Li nodded. Blue Fire's eyes lit up, and he sighed in praise. According to legend, if two types of divine power fuse, the power would increase tenfold. If three types fuse, the power will increase a hundredfold. If four types of divine power fuse dot no one knows for sure, but it probably will strengthen a thousandfold. Even using sovereigns might only allows a person to be a few hundred times stronger than when using hired power. Lin Li how about you? You fused four types of divine power. How is your strength? Is it even stronger than when you use sovereign power? Rizjum asked expectantly. Sovereign power was strong, but there was a limit to it. It made someone a few hundred times stronger than when they used hired power. I feel, Linley said with a laugh, that after fusing three types of divine power, my strength is indeed a hundred times greater. I sense dot that it is comparable to when I use destruction type sovereign's might. Linley was skilled in the laws of the earth and so when he used destruction type sovereign's might, it naturally wasn't completely effective, only increasing his power a hundredfold or so. It was comparable to a triple fusion of divine power. Blue Fire nodded slightly. It was all as Blue Fire had expected. Then four kinds? Rizjum said hurriedly. I'm not sure either. Linley laughed. How can you not be sure? Rizjum stared, and the nearby Bibi began to laugh. Rizjum, my boss divine fire clone is only at the god level. If god level divine power fuses with higher divine power, I imagine the strength wouldn't increase that much. Rizjum was startled, then gave a few embarrassed chuckles. I forgot. Linley, you've only been training for two thousand years. It was true. For someone who had been training for just 2000 years to possess three divine clones was already very terrifying. But of course, the Infernal Realm had many geniuses, some of whom trained even faster than Lin Li, but dot one thing was for certain. There was definitely not a single person in the multiverse who was able to undergo a soul mutation successfully with four divine clones. At least for now, Linley was absolutely one of a kind. Formidable, formidable. Blue Fire sighed in praise. Soul mutates are indeed terrifying. Once your divine fire clone reaches the higher level as well, and you fuse four types of divine power, your strength will far surpass that of someone using sovereign's might. But the rewards you reaped were commensurate to the danger you faced, this time. You just barely survived. It really was a close call. Bibi nodded as well. Mr. Leilin. Linley suddenly frowned. What is it? Blue Fire asked, puzzled. Linley shook his head. I have a feeling right now. A unique feeling. A feeling of control. A feeling of control of material things, and even of the surrounding space. As Linley spoke, he lifted his fist. I have a strange sense, as though I could punch a hole in space with a full strength blow. As Linley spoke, he smashed out with a full strength punch. Linley wasn't in dragon form, nor did he use Sovereign's might. As far as laws went, he was far weaker than Paragon's. Rip. As his punch smashed outwards, Space seemed to explode forth like a massive explosion on the surface of a lake, and a meter long, giant spatial rift appeared. This. 
Bibi was stupefied, and Rizjim and Hum were speechless as well. Blue Fire's eyes lit up. Prior to this, Lin Li had to be in dragon form, use Sovereign's might, and use his god spark weapon to tear open a spatial rift. But by comparison dot the power wasn't as great as this fist. Boss, you, your fist dot it's almost on par with the palm blows of that hired paragon, Bear. Bear had used a simple palm chop to tear a giant spatial rift open. I dot I'm not sure. Linley was rather stupefied. I just have this feeling of control, as though I can easily split space apart. But I didn't expect I could actually do it. Linley. A voice rang out. Linley turned to look. The speaker was Bluefire. Currently, Bluefire's face was covered in laughter. Ha ha dot Linley, that's your will, infused with the natural laws. Since your will encompasses the natural laws, naturally you are able to control the world. This is a special power you now possess. The power that only paragons and sovereigns possess. Any attack, once infused with your will, will rise to a ludicrous level. Will dot power? Linley was stunned. The power which only paragons and sovereigns possess? Bibi and Rizjim were stunned as well. Linley tested out this feeling of control and indeed, he felt as though he had power over the surrounding spatial ripples and movements. This was something he never had before. In the plane of battlefield, Linley had previously only sensed danger. But now, he had the feeling that he was in control of his own destiny. The feeling of standing above all other life forms and looking down upon them. I didn't expect this. I truly didn't expect this. Blue Fire could hardly believe it. The previous soul mutates had more powerful souls, but even those extremely rare triple power soul mutates who are scattered throughout the multiverse did not develop this power. Who would have imagined dot that a soul mutate with four divine clones would actually gain this sort of power? It makes sense. A soul mutate with four divine clones has a soul which is far more powerful than a soul mutate with three divine clones. For a person's soul to reach such a height in power dot it only makes sense for the natural world to bestow this power upon that person. Blue Fire was very excited. And then, he turned his scorching hot gaze towards Linley. Linley, come, come, attack me, try and attack me. Let me have a test and see how great your power is. Let's see if you, a till now impossible four-way soul mutate, is more powerful, or if a paragon is more powerful. Book 19. Metamorphosis, Chapter 52, The Path to the Peak. Linley, in his heart, also wanted to get a clear understanding of his current strength. A hired paragon like Blue Fire was an incredibly rare whetstone for testing himself. How would anyone else dare to exchange blows with the current Linley? Fine, then. Linley laughed and nodded. The nearby Rizjim and Bibi were very excited. Rizjim was the sort who loved to spread chaos. Ha ha, a paragon on one side, and a never before seen quad power soul mutate on the other. Don't hold back, you two, have a huge battle. Even if you destroy this cave, that's fine. Linley just laughed. No need. This battle is just for testing my strength. Mr. Leilin, for this battle, let's only use our physical strength as well as the power of our will. Let's not use divine power or sovereign power. That's a good idea. Blue Fire agreed with Linley's suggestion. If Linley was too powerful or if Blue Fire was too powerful and something occurred that was out of their expectations, that wouldn't be good. Outside the mountain, on the desolate landscape, 
Lily and Blue Fire were a hundred meters away from each other, while Isjum, Bibi, and Rum were gathered to one side, filled with eagerness. Bibi's eyes were shining. Rizjum, I'm willing to bet that my boss isn't weaker than Blue Fire at all. He might even be stronger. Who wants to bet with you? Rizjum let out a snort. Look, they are starting. Linley was dressed in a sky blue robe, while Blue Fire was dressed in a long white robe. The two beamed at each other, then began to attack. Linley glided forth as agilely as the wind, almost dreamlike, as multiple blurs emerged from him. As for Blue Fire, he moved about so fast it seemed he was teleporting. As the two began to move, the three onlookers were badly startled. Bibi, they are only using physical strength. Linley's speed has reached such a ridiculous level. At this moment, Linley and Bluefire were moving at speeds slower than when Bluefire rushed over to save Linley, when he had hastened and even used Sovereign's might. Back then, with each movement, Bluefire had traversed multiple kilometers. The current Linley was not relying on Sovereign power or Divine power, just on his physical strength and the power of his will. What a wonderful feeling! Linley felt joy in his heart. Just by relying on my physical strength and will, my speed is so much faster than it was before. If I were to use divine power, most likely I wouldn't be much weaker than blue fire. Linley's control over the surrounding world made movement through it incomparably simple. His speed was shocking. As the two moved, they began to exchange blows. The two simultaneously struck out with their fists. Rumble. Linley's fist shot out like a thunderbolt, slashing through the skies, resulting in that rumbling sound. Space was thrown into chaos, and one twisted spatial rift after another appeared. Smash. Like a detonation, Blue Fire struck out with his fist, and the power of it instantly exploded forth. The speed of his fist was much faster than even Linley's punch, and a blurry flash of red light could be seen two seemingly ordinary punches. Neither dodged at all, they clashed head on. Bang! A deep yet soft sound. Rumble. At the point of the clash, space itself was completely unable to further endure such terrifying power, and seven or eight spatial rifts instantly appeared. Lily and Blue Fire both couldn't help but take a step back. They were evenly matched. Ha ha, wonderful, wonderful. Linley, there's no need for us to hide our divine power. Let's have one wonderful, all-out battle. Blue Fire, who had always been so graceful and poised, for once was feeling excited. His eyes were shining. Then be careful. Linley said with a bit of a smirk. My fused divine power isn't much weaker than sovereign power. I'm not necessarily the one who needs to be careful. Blue Fire said with a laugh. You have fused divine power, but I will directly use sovereign power. From their earlier exchange of blows, Linley understood that there wasn't a huge difference between them, since that was the case, there was no need for them to not even use divine power. Without using divine power, this battle wouldn't be fun enough. The cold wind of the planar battlefield howled past, rustling Linley's clothes. Linley's gaze, however, was completely focused on Blue Fiora in front of him. It has been so many years. Grandpa Doring, I've finally reached the true peak of deities. The true peak. The person in front of me is a hired paragon. His desire to battle increased to the limit, and Linley felt an irrepressible excitement. Rumble. The inky jade divine power in Linley's body began to roil about like dragons swimming in the sea. Linley's gaze suddenly became fierce. Swoosh. In midair, a series of blurred figures appeared, while Linley himself had already began. Exchanging blows with blue fire. The space of the planar battlefield began to tremble, 
as one terrifying spatial rift after another was torn open. Previously, when Linley and Bluefire had only used their physical strength and will to fight, the spatial tears were small ones. But now, every single spatial rift was like an enormous gouge. Two virtually invisible blurs were constantly interacting, and around them, spatial rifts occasionally opened and occasionally closed. Rizjum, Vham, and Bibi watched numbly. Two paragons fighting full force against each other with no reservations? This was quite rare. This dot this. Bibi, stunned, didn't know what to say. The space in front of them seemed to be quaking, constantly tearing apart and healing, due to the battle between Linley and Bluefire, these two supreme experts. It seemed as though in this area of battle, space itself was about to collapse. Rizjum and the other two now realized that huge distance between them. Linley and Bluefire were titans. They were just infants. So powerful. Rizjum cleared his throat, his eyes round. The power of paragons. Vrhm held his breath as well, his gaze locked on that region. And Linley. He isn't weaker than Mr. Leylin at all. No wonder paragons treat fighting with me as a game. Rizjum let out a soft sigh. Previously, when the four of them met Bear, Bear completely toyed with them. He wasn't able to fight back at all. Fortunately, Bibi's defense was simply too monstrous, which was why they were lucky enough to survive. But if Rizjum hadn't insisted on protecting Bibi, Bear would have driven Bibi into a spatial rift. Irritate a paragon? Even if you had three sovereign artifacts and were seemingly invincible, a paragon could still drive you into a spatial rift. Unless a sovereign were to intervene, you would be done for, and even if a sovereign did want to intervene, it would be no simple task. A battle between paragon level experts? Only against each other can they completely unleash their power. Bibi sighed in amazement. Boss, you are too strong. And this is quite bizarre. Bibi suddenly frowned. That region of space is fractured so badly, but it can still instantly repair instead of completely collapsing. How bizarre. The weird thing is dot the boss and blue fire are actually not affected by the gravitational pull of those enormous spatial tears near them at all. They didn't go into chaotic space. Rizjum and Rhm nodded slightly. Normally, when experts battled, the spatial rifts wouldn't be too ridiculous, if spatial rifts did appear, experts would avoid them slightly. But Linley and Bluefire completely ignored the spatial rifts, and even battled at the very borders of them. That must be what their will permits, Rizjum said in a low voice. When one's will is as strong as a sovereign's, even chaotic space poses no threats, they can roam it as they please. After being trapped in chaotic space, only someone on the level of a sovereign could save you. Paragons weren't at that level yet. This was the will of a sovereign. Their guesses were correct. Linley could clearly sense that the control he had over the universe made it so that the devouring power of the spatial rifts were completely unable to affect him. Rumble. He punched out, and 108 inky jade dragons of power emerged from Linley's fist, instantly covering blue fire. A powerful gravitational force pressed down from all directions on blue fire. This gravitational compression also contained the power of Linley's will and was exceedingly strong. For the pre-metamorphosis Linley, this technique was effective against ordinary commanders but was child's play for a paragon. But now dot this technique was very dangerous against even paragons. Swish. Like a bolt of lightning, a red light flashed. Blue Fire's fist was always astonishingly fast. Bang. Their fists collided. Linley felt as though a volcano had exploded forth, as an irrepressible explosive power passed towards him. As for blue fire, 
he felt as though the layers of strikes were like mountains hammering down towards him. The two were knocked backwards and retreated. The battle should end here, Blue Fire sent mentally. Linley laughed, then nodded. This battle had attracted the attention of some nearby commanders, but when they saw what was going on here, and saw from afar how these apocalyptic spatial rifts that were over a hundred meters long were appearing, they were so terrified that none of them dared draw near. This battle was simply too terrifying. They were all so puzzled. Which two paragons would be so bored, or have such irreconcilable differences, as to battle like this? Within the cave. The five sat down to celebrate. Boss, ha ha, I am so happy. Bibi smugly laughed loudly. From today onwards, damn, who will dare to make trouble for us? They should be grateful if we don't make trouble for them. I've had to swallow too much crap here in the planar battlefield. Now, at least, we're about to turn the tables. It seemed as though Bibi wanted to give vent to an entire belly full of anger. Ha ha, drink. Linley was extremely happy as well. The breakthrough he had made today made it so that he would no longer have to look up to others. What did it mean, to be on the Paragon level? It meant dot that amongst deities, there was no one capable of threatening him. As for sovereigns? Unless absolutely necessary, sovereigns wouldn't interfere in the battles of deities. What's more dot it wouldn't be that simple for even sovereigns to kill paragons. If something went wrong, paragons could immediately flee to a material plane. In addition, Sovereigns would generally try to pull paragons to their side. The sovereigns all wanted to have a paragon become their emissary, but the paragons themselves were naturally quite choosy. They would only pick someone they liked, or someone who was extremely strong as their sovereign backer. For ordinary commanders, it was the opposite, the sovereigns would pick them. As for paragons, they picked their sovereign. Or, for some of the more arrogant ones, they wouldn't become emissaries at all. They didn't want to listen to the orders of others. That was fine. Barragans were qualified to act like this. Linley. Rizjim began to chortle. Have you ever considered becoming a sovereign's emissary? Linley was startled. The nearby room nodded in approval. Right. Linley. Your strength has reached such a high level. Very few people know this, but once your strength becomes publicly known, you will definitely attract the interest of some sovereigns. They will definitely work to try and make an expert like you become their emissary. A sovereign's emissary? Linley was rather hesitant. Bibi nodded repeatedly. Right. Grandpa said it as well. There are very, very few paragons, and most of them are quite arrogant. They don't wish to become an emissary. Paragons who become emissaries of a sovereign are air, there's only so many to begin with, while there are 77 sovereigns. Boss, I imagine people will be fighting over you. Rizjim hurriedly said enticingly, Linley, actually, my mother is a very powerful sovereign, and she's treated you quite well. She gave you that soul stone. How about, you come be my mother's emissary? Linley was rather hesitant. Mr. Leilin? Linley looked towards Bluefire, awaiting Bluefire's advice. After all, Bluefire was himself a paragon. Why be an emissary? Bluefire laughed calmly. If you refuse to be an emissary, the sovereigns can't possibly act against you for such a reason. After all, after your power is put on display, quite a few sovereigns will come invite you. You can't possibly accept them all. More importantly dot after becoming a paragon, what's the point of becoming an emissary? We train to pursue the peak of perfection. Although by becoming an emissary, our sovereign will also respect us and won't order us around or force us to kneel to them, I still feel as though being free is better. Blue Fire said calmly. 
In his heart, Linley agreed with Bluefire's way of thinking. A sovereign's emissary isn't necessarily a servant. Rizjim stared at Bluefire, hurriedly rebutting him. Of course sovereigns won't care about ordinary emissaries, but paragons. They are people who possess a will. Sovereigns will respect them and treat them as friends, rather than servants. Blue Fire couldn't help but laugh. Rizjum, let's talk about others. This is Linley's decision to make. Linley, what do you think? Rizjum turned to look at Linley. Linley smiled. No rush. For now, I have no intentions of becoming a sovereign's emissary. More importantly, Dot Paragons have already reached the peak of fusing profound mysteries, with no further possible areas of improvement. Perhaps they might become a sovereign's emissary out of boredom. But as for me, I have many things to do. After all, as far as the laws go, I haven't reached my limit. I am just imagining, after countless years, becoming a paragon of a law as well. What would that be like? I am quite eager to find out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and Peace. Wind Pay.